Jeff Snyder here at the Kia Telluride Supper Suite in Park City, and I'm sitting down with the team behind Sergio. We've got director Greg Barkin, producers Brent Travers and Daniel Dreyfus, and international superstar Wagner Mora. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. How's, how's the festival treating you guys so far? It's awesome. It's been great. Yeah. yeah. We had a, we, we screened for the volunteers on opening night, yeah. which was the first time we saw it with a, an audience other than friends. It was kind of a, amazing. Right? It was amazing. It was the first, the first, yeah, first time we, we screened the film in front of an audience. It, was, it seemed like the perfect audience for this film, for this particular yeah. film. And I, I'm also <clears throat> in the juror of the world's oh, okay. competition in this year. So I'm going to be till the end of the festival watching movies. So it's been which very is cool. I'm that's, jealous. It's I, I great. take off on Tuesday. You um, can watch anything, right? You just stay here and right, yeah. Right. But <laughs> so you don't, you don't really see the films. I, 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 I do my best. I do my best. I, I wish I'd seen this one, you know, uh, and I'm de definitely going to check it out when it hits Netflix in April. Um, but Greg, tell us, you know, you directed a documentary like a decade ago about, about Sergio. Tell me about, you know, turning that into a narrative feature. It was also called Sergio. We were yes. here. Uh, 11 years ago, exactly, the same week that uh, Barack Obama was inaugurated. So taking that story out in that context and now uh, is very different. You know, I, I, um, it's a film about empathy and, and hope um, set against the darkness and uh, how one guy, Sergio Vera de Mello, a UN diplomat, uh, struggles with life's purpose and finding um, connections with those closest to him. You know, it's a story that has been in my head for a long time. I actually saw it when I first heard about the real story. I saw it as a movie. This was back in 2005 initially mm -hmm. and uh, made it as a documentary, but always wanted to return to the subject matter on an emotional level as a narrative. And so it's great to be back at the festival all these years later with, with this incredible cast. And, and Brent and Daniel, how did you guys get involved? What appealed to you about Sergio's story? You know, our story, I think, is kind of an interesting one as well, because Daniel and I had been friends and known each other for a long time. But Daniel and Greg had actually been developing a Sergio project together years ago. And then Wagner and I were on a separate track, and we'd been looking oh, for wow. projects to do together. And then one day we get a phone call, and, you know, it's like one of your friends calling you up and saying, hey, I wanted to do this as well. And we merged our projects, and we had the same vision for the film and the same emotional core to the film. And it was as easy as that. And, you know, normally so many films will smother and die or cancel each other out. And really, that's not what happened. It thrived because of, you know, Greg's documentary. We were all behind that. And we, you know, we were so passionate about the material. And I'll just add to that, that I actually met Greg originally at Sundance. I had seen the documentary years prior, but the festivals like this also serve that purpose. In addition to all the movies, you eventually meet people that you click with creatively. Um, we were introduced Literally, he made this documentary, then he was interested in this type of film, and a partnership was born right then and there. And a few years later, we're back here, where we met, where it all started for us, at least, um, for this particular project. So it's wonderful to be at a festival where we have this creative energy around us. And Wagner, can you tell me about getting into the headspace of, of playing this character? You know, I think that this is this is the uh, third character in a role that I play, uh, a, someone that really existed. So I, I did Pablo Escobar, and then I did this film with Olivier Assayas um, uh, about the Cuban uh, spies in, in Miami. Wasp and Network, right? Wasp oh, Network. I'm excited for that one. The Wasp Network. This one, and then I directed a film in Brazil about a, a Brazilian revolutionary called Carlos Marighella. So I was dealing with real uh, characters, which was something pretty new to me till that point mm -hmm. to Pablo and the way I, I think I uh, I think the best way to approach this uh, real uh, characters is uh, trying to know everything about them you know studying and reading and watching I've seen uh, Greg's documentary a hundred times and but then I think an actor has to forget all that and then to create uh, his, I, I created my own version of surgery you know because in the end of the day that's what uh, we actors do right so it's a, it's based on a real character we had a lot of responsibility towards uh that character and um but it's uh, it's uh, it's in a way it's also a, a creation of us it, it the film had to work as uh it's uh, the documentary was already made right. so it right, had to work as a feature film yep um, Greg, you, uh, uh, Ana de Armas is, is your female lead here, and you're catching her at a pretty incredible time. Uh, I mean, she, she is just red hot right now. You talk about casting her and, and, and working with her. Yeah, well, she's amazing in the movie and a great, incredible talent. And uh, 
it's 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 wonderful to see what's happening with her with her career i mean the way it came about i mean it was very serendipitous uh it was a friend uh, one of our actors um who plays sergio's bodyguard had dinner with daniel and happened to mention that he was having dinner that night with Anna de Armas, who was already top of our list. Okay. So Daniel, very in a great producer way, said, can you slip her the script and mention the project, and which he did. And that was on a Friday. And by Monday, she was at my house, uh, having read the script, saying, I have to play Car- Carolina. Don't talk to anybody else. Wow. This is okay. all done. Just So, I mean, it was, it was, you could, you know, I think... We didn't know what was going to happen to her, but based on her past work, we weren't, aren't surprised. And you could see when the when yeah. we started rehearsing and enrolling that it's, I mean, the chemistry and the magic was just was kind of leaping off of the screen. Yeah, what was you, it like? I mean, you guys had that. Oh, I mean, Anna, I, I think she's, a, she's one of the most talented actors I've have ever worked with. She's very talented. And she has this... Uh, superstar quality you know we all kind of knew that Anna was gonna be like huge mm-hmm. in, a, in, in the next in the next years and she's a she became a very good friend of all of us and she's a she's adorable she's great and I'm, I'm, I'm just bummed that she's not here because she's working she's working non-stop I'm more bummed Wagner yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> but the first it would time be great we, to have her here. when we first yeah she'll be for, she'll do other press for the film but when we first rehearsed the, their scenes we spent three days in a hotel room in Rio, just going through all that, right? And they sort of discovered, we did the whole chronology of their relationship from when they, from they met all the way through. And you could see, it was just like, oh my goodness, this is gonna leap yeah. off the screen. And it, it, and it does. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you've assembled a great ensemble here. I, I have huge respect for, for character actors, and you have three of the greats, Brian F. O'Byrne, Garrett yeah. Dillahunt, Bradley Whitford. Th- those guys are tremendous. Can you they, talk about uh, how, how they all uh, sort of you know, came together? Um, they rock, don't they? And you know, great, I have yeah. to say, you know, part of our process with the film, whether it was with the the supporting cast or even with our department heads, everybody who read the script and had seen Greg's documentary, especially, all wanted to do the film. So it wasn't we didn't have to do any convincing or anything else. But I mean, Garrett loved it. Um, when you see Bradley Whitford as Paul Bremer, he embodies. <laughs> All the things that you, well, but he's not what you expect. No, I think not. all of us sure. we had we had an idea in our own mind. What, what you know, it's Paul Bremer, the U.S. ambassador uh, envoy to Iraq, who who kind of messes things up in real life and um, can be kind of like seen as a caricature in a way. And um, and so we fil- actually filmed some of like there was a phone call that we filmed where yeah. you, Sergio's talking to Bremer. And uh, we filmed that scene of uh, Wagner's side of it. And Bradley shows up and yeah. sort of brings this whole different human connection to this. We role. had to shoot it again. We had to shoot it again. Because <laughs> he was like, his motto was for Bremer was, yes, we can't. So, <laughs> <laughs> but he was, I mean, the scenes you guys have together. No, it was magical. great. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm one of the producers of the film. So I had the chance to kind of participate in the casting of the film, mm-hmm. which yeah. for was, so I, I, I must say this is the perfect, Cast, you know, and Brian is here. Garrett is Brian, here. Garrett, yes. They, they are. They all are going to be in a in our in our premiere. Uh, Bradley's not going to make all, it. He's, as she's, like, yeah. he's also filmed. But I think it's. Uh, uh, I have so much respect. And which one of each actor of this film? I was like working with them. I had a lot of scenes with Brian in the in the in the shaft in the, in the, in, the, in the rubble. Yeah. Which were the most complicated part of the film for. Yeah. In, in emotionally and technically and and so we were like basically Brian and I inside that in a weird position inside and that was I learned so much in e- each one of these actors they have very different methods like Anna is very like um, uh, she's it's led by her intuition and she just goes there and yeah. and, and and she does it and, and which is amazing and Brian studies each line yeah. of, and then when we were rehearsing, so I was learning yeah. so much, and and of course working with Bradley, which, which is, who is an actor that I always admired so much. Yeah. So and I was very lucky. It, yeah. Will uh, will Craig Borton be at the premiere? Because I, I loved uh, Dallas Buyers. Yeah, yeah. Craig's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Can you talk about sort of that that script and how it developed over the years? Maybe what what changed? I mean, Craig. Cra- well, I mean, Craig's uh, did an amazing work on this, and I think the great sort of. You know, he had a complicated relationship with his own father and kind of ident- saw his, his own father in Sergio. And so what I always, what drew me to Craig from when we first met was his emotional connection with the material and his, his desire to explore Sergio's inner turmoil. Um, he had, he came up with this kind of uh, very ambitious, innovative structure 
Um, we were all sort of inspired by um, um, uh, Diving Bell and the Butterfly. I love that movie. Love that movie. Julian Schnabel, amazing. And, and that kind of playing with time and, and structure and memory, Craig really kind of cracked that on his first draft. And then we spent a lot of time, you know, refining over the, over, over, over the months. Yeah. Um, and then it, it comes out April 17th on Netflix? April 17th on Netflix and in select theaters near you. Very and cool. uh, we're very excited. Thank you guys for coming in, the team behind Sergio. Thank, thank you. you to the Thanks, Kia Supper Suite.